go to the Supreme Court. That's my understanding. Um, the federal appeal over the impact created by the state referendum at issue is whether it violates the 14th Amendment's guarantee of equal protection and due process. Such individual protections have often been used in cases of civil rights, such as school de desegregation and voting. Uh, those against Prop 8 will say that marriage is a fundamental state-sanctioned right and that same-sex couples are being discriminated against uh, when laws deny them that right. And Prop 8 proponents have said that the state legislatures and voters have the right to amend a state constitution on defining marriage and that their wishes must be respected by the federal courts. So how does it get to the Supreme Court, according to CNN? After the Ninth Circuit Court, of, uh, court rules, lawyers have the option of asking the Supreme Court to intervene uh, which will likely be the next step after the larger en banc panel, after the 11 judge panel. How long will it take to get there? Um, they don't answer that. <laughs> it could be a year or two before the case reaches the Supreme Court. Mm. Still a good thing. Still it's, a good thing. It's a good thing. It, it really feels like the tide is turning a bit. Well, and, and what's interesting, and this is where, <clears throat> as you said, I printed out a lot of paper. Um, the judge's ruling is 139 pages. Mm, yeah, well, we, we probably shouldn't read the whole thing. I'm not going to read 139 <laughs> pages. Um, but what's very interesting is this, this comes on the heels of the Massachusetts ruling that found Section 3 of DOMA to be unconstitutional right. because it essentially violated uh, similar protections. Um, and I have some of that too. But the language used by the judges is start uh, in both cases are starting to make some uh, very strong parallels. That even though it's not <coughs> quite there yet, the the Massachusetts ruling only affects Massachusetts at this time. But if either side appeals it, the court that will hear the appeal has a much broader jurisdiction. Sure. So when they rule on it, they'll be setting. Um, um, setting up a, a ruling that will affect a much larger populace than just Massachusetts. Um, what I wanted to read from here, <laughs> in the California case, and, and this ended up coming up in the Massachusetts case a little bit too. Now, the, the Massachusetts case is strictly against, uh, strictly questioning the federal government's uh, definition of marriage as between one man and one woman. Um, specifically around the fact that that's a state right, not a federal, not right. something the federal government can do. California's Prop 8 was specifically about same-sex marriage, so they addressed that issue more directly. Um, both sides, proponents and opponents of Prop 8, um, concede that the freedom to marry is recognized as a fundamental right protected by the Due Process Clause. Um, the parties do not dispute that the right to marry is fundamental. The question presented here is whether plaintiffs seek to exercise their fundamental right to marry or because they are couples of the same sex, whether they seek recognition of a new right. Um, he says that in the judge's ruling, to determine whether a right is fundamental under the due process clause, the court inquires into whether the right is rooted in our nation's history, legal traditions, and practices. So this is not some radical... Um, decision that he's putting forward. Right. Um, marriage, he says, has retained certain characteristics throughout the history of the United States. Marriage requires two parties to give their free consent to form a relationship, which then forms the foundation of a household. Uh, the state regulates marriage because marriage creates stable households, which in turn forms the basis of a stable, governable populace. The, um, never has the state inquired into the procreative capacity or intent before issuing a marriage license. Indeed, a marriage license is more than a license to have procreative sexual intercourse. Uh, race restrictions on marital partners were once common in most states, but are now seen as archaic, shameful, and bizarre. Uh, the marital bargain in California, along with other states, traditionally required that a woman's legal and economic identity be subsumed by her husband's upon marriage under the doctrine of coverture. This once unquestioned aspect of marriage is now regarded as antithetical to the notion of marriage as a union of equals. He says, as states move to recognize the equality of the sexes, they eliminated laws and practices like coverture that have made gender a proxy for a spouse's role within the marriage. Marriage was thus transformed from a male-dominated institution into an institution recognizing men and women as equals. Yet individuals retain the right to marry, 
they did not, that right did not become different simply because the institution of marriage became compatible with gender equality. The evidence shows that the movement of marriage away from a gendered institution toward an institution free from state mandated gender role reflects an evolution in the understanding of gender rather than a change in marriage. The evidence did not show any historical purpose for excluding same-sex couples from marriage as states have never required spouses to have an, an ability or willingness to procreate in order to marry. Rather, the exclusion exists as an artifact of a time when genders were seen as having distinct roles in society and in marriage. And clearly from some of the arguments, a lot of people still feel that way, that there are distinct roles that have to be maintained within a marriage. Um, the evidence shows that domestic partnerships were created as an alternative to marriage that distinguishes same-sex from opposite-sex couples. Uh, I'm reading highlights here, mm. obviously. California has created two separate and parallel institutions to provide couples with essentially the same rights and obligations. The sole basis upon which California determines whether a couple receives the designation married or the designation domestic partnership is the sex of the spouse relative to one another. And then most importantly here, the evidence shows that domestic partnerships do not fulfill California's due process obligation to plaintiffs for two reasons. First, domestic partnerships are distinct from marriage and do not provide the same social meaning as marriage. And second, domestic partnerships were created specifically so that California could offer same-sex couples rights and benefits while explicitly withholding marriage from the same-sex couples. If it was created to exclude them from marriage, then it's not the same as marriage. Right. Um, yes. The evidence at trial shows that domestic partnerships exist solely to differentiate same-sex unions from marriages. Um, he gets back to the point of procreation. The court asked the parties to identify a difference between heterosexuals and homosexuals that the government might fairly need to take into account when crafting legislation. Because this, this question continues to come up of um, what's the benefit to the state of making this distinction between otherwise similarly situated classes of people? If there's a significant benefit to the state to, to draw that distinction, then it withstands the um, rational test. If there's no, not a, a significant distinction, then it has to fail the rational test. Right. Um, proponents pointed only to a difference between same-sex couples who are incapable through sexual intercourse of producing offspring biologically related to both parties and opposite-sex couples, some of whom are capable through sexual intercourse of producing such offspring. Proponents did not, however, advance any reason why the government may use sexual orientation as a proxy for fertility or why the government may need to take into account fertility when legislating marriage. Um, <laughs> so we, we, you know, the 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 California, I'm sorry, the Massachusetts case um, gets into some of this as well. When they they, they talk about um, how the sterile and elderly have never been denied the right to marry simply because they can't procreate. Procreation, the ability to procreate, is not a basis anywhere in the country or historically for marriage. Right. Right. It's that's it's insane. It, and and yes, um, it clearly it was an irrational argument. Um, they make several more. Hmm. Proponents first argue that the Proposition 8 is, is rational because it preserves the traditional institution of marriage and the union, uh, as the union of a man and a woman. This is a big argument that we hear a lot of. That traditional marriage is preferred, that, it, that it needs to be between one man and one woman. The judge says that tradition alone, however, cannot form a rational basis for a law. The ancient lineage of a classification does not make it rational. Rather, the state must have an interest apart from the fact of the tradition itself. The evidence shows that the tradition of gender restrictions arose when spouses were legally required to adhere to specific gender roles. California has eliminated all legally mandated gender roles except the requirement that a marriage consists of one man and one woman. The, tr the tradition of restricting marriage to opposite sex couples does not further any state interest. Rather, the evidence shows that Proposition 8 harms the state's interest in equality because it mandates that men and women be treated differently based only on antiquated and discredited notions of gender. Moreover, the state cannot have an interest in disadvantaging an unpopular minority group simply because the group is unpopular. And that's something that the judge in, in Massachusetts said as well. Right. You can't pass a law just because the people you're trying to dis, just so you can disadvantage an unpopular group. Um, indeed, proponents, proponents presented no reliable evidence that allowing same-sex couples to marry will have any negative effects on society or the institution of marriage. 
The evidence shows that allowing same-sex couples to marry will be simple for California to implement because it's already done so. So no, need, no change needs to be phased in. Um, proponents' largest group of purported state interests relates to opposite-sex parents. And this is the other big argument we always right. hear. Yes. Proponents argue that Proposition 8 promotes enduring and stable family structures for the responsible raising and care of children by their biological parents. Mm. Same sex, um, the judge writes down a, a little later, same sex parents and opposite sex parents are of equal quality. Proposition 8 does not make it more likely that opposite sex couples will marry and raise offspring biologically related to both parents. The evidence does not support a finding that California has an interest in preferring opposite sex parents over same sex parents. Moreover, Proposition 8 has nothing to do with children, as Proposition 8 simply prevents same-sex couples from marrying. Same-sex couples can have or adopt and raise children. When they do, they are treated identically to opposite-sex parents under California law. And this was something that actually gets into the other adoption right. question. Is A lot of times people forget that if you have a same-sex couple, either two guys or two women, one of them may have biological children. Yes. That's their children. They're it currently, happens a lot. It happens a lot. They're currently considered a single parent. They're, they're in a long-term relationship with a partner. They're married to the partner. They want their partner to be able to adopt the children so that they have the same parental rights over those kids. It's not like you have same-sex couples trolling rich neighborhoods asking if anybody wants to get rid of one of their kids. <laughs> right. You know, you know and there are obviously a lot of cases where um, couples, heterosexual and, and uh, same-sex couples, will adopt kids either out of foster care or adoption agencies because you know, ultimately the kids will have a, a better life in a stable household. Yeah. So anyway, um, it always strikes me as funny when people talk about same-sex couples adopting. They always assume they're trolling a neighborhood for kids. Yeah, that's, um, that, that's kind of strange, isn't it? Um... And it, it's it's I won't I won't get long winded, but it's it's uh, interesting that um, when you have same sex couples, if they're gonna if they're gonna adopt children, it's almost certain that those are wanted children, <laughs> not accidents. Right. You know, it's hard sort of hard to have an accident. An accidental <laughs> adoption. And, or even an accident for like a lesbian couple, an accidental pregnancy, yes. kind of hard to do. Right. You have so, to go through a great deal of effort. Not that that means Not that that means anything. But this whole notion that they're not good parents is, well, and is crazy. The, the Massachusetts case, um, Gill, they get into some of the same questions of parenthood. And um, there's, I don't know if I, don't think I have it, but there's, um, there's a good deal of talk about, and there may be in here too, as I said, there's 139 pages. I haven't gotten through all of it. But um, about all the evidence that's come out since 1996 that, that proves unequivocally, no matter who out there wants to dispute it, unequivocally to scientific communities that there's no discernible difference um, in the outcomes of children raised by right. same-sex couples as opposite-sex couples. That having two parents and a stable, loving home is more critical to the outcome of the kids than the gender of their parents. Right. Yeah. But... So even if California had an interest in preferring opposite-sex couples to the same-sex parents, Proposition 8 does not affect who can or should become a parent under California law. That's the important part. Um, proponents argued Prop 8 advances a state interest in encouraging the formation of stable households. Instead, the evidence shows that Proposition 8 undermines that state interest because the same-sex households have become less stable by the passage of Prop 8. The inability to marry denies